YouTube, what's growing on? I'm Brian Taylor and today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about citrus trees. So citrus here in Arizona is one of our five staples that we use for agriculture here in the beginning of our state's economy. Um, we had copper, climate, cotton, uh, citrus, and cattle. So citrus was a huge part of the ag agriculture industry here in the valley which helped bring in a lot of our water. So a lot of the things that we enjoy today were made possible because of citrus groves here in the valley. Um, citrus is still commercially grown in the Mar in Maricopa County and throughout the deserts of Arizona um, and it's a very amazing tree to grow. One thing that is a positive about citrus is it can take our heat. It can take our heat very well as long as the trunk is protected, which I'll get into later. It can also take our cold winters. There's not many citrus trees that need cold protection or frost protection during the winter time. Most of them can handle it with little to no effort on our part. One of the best things that I love about citrus is that there are so many varieties. Like this is from our tangelo tree. And once March hits, we really do have quite a bit of, we do have quite a bit of time where we have fresh tangelos on our tree. You can tell by this, this one. I mean, I'm peeling this by hand. Super easy to peel. Uh, a lot of great sections. Just a super fun tree for our family to enjoy. And we're gonna enjoy this for about a month before the tree starts having the fruit fall off. Um, but if you like citrus, you can have citrus spanned through almost a six month period of time. There's some early ripening citrus trees that'll ripen in, in December. Some of them will ripen as late as, as May. It just depends on the citrus. And then you have varieties like most, most lemons. You have a good steady crop of lemons for several months at a time because they have different stages of flowering and developing. But over here in the early 1700s, between 1706, in 1710 by Spanish missionaries. And they brought them over like they brought over many of our fruit trees, but it was one of the early non-native trees that were brought to Arizona that were used for uh, food production. Um, basically every citrus tree that you guys will see is a hybrid citrus tree. Citrus uh, originate from China or the, the, the lower part of the Himalayas and uh, some of them go down into Indonesia and the different varieties are in Australia. Um, we have an Australian finger lime. That's one of the varieties that they believe is, is naturally from that area. Um, but they've been hybridized and brought throughout the world. Um, Arizona, we have a lot of different varieties. Mainly the, the main commercial variety we have here is the Arizona Sweet, which is one of the best tasting oranges hands down that you can find. Um, in fact, I'm going to be grafting a bunch of that onto this orange tree because these oranges don't taste very good. And I want a different variety. Mmm. Love these. So, one, one of the quick things that I want to talk about is tree care. So, these trees, like I said, they're very resilient. But there are a few things you need to do. You can never have the trees with their trunks exposed. So you either have to do one of two things. You have to you have to put them into a bush, like I'll show you in one video that I've got coming up, or you're going to have to protect them, like I'm going to show you right now. So right here, we do trim our trees to look more like a tree versus a uh, a shrub. We do that for a couple of reasons. One, the wife likes the way it looks, and that's fine. But two. We also use the understory of the citrus tree as kind of a nurse tree to protect some varieties of plants that are a little more sensitive to the sun. Those don't necessarily need it, but over here we have avocados, loquats, and uh, regular cherry trees. Not the Barbados cherry, but regular cherry trees. So all of those are a little more sensitive. So if you're gonna do this, you have to protect your trunk because the trunk cannot take any direct sun contact. So you're either going to have to do one of two things. You're gonna to have to paint the truck trunk with a, a, a latex or a, a tree friendly paint. Um, Ivy Organics makes a great organic product. I know they said they subscribed to my channel and I appreciate that. 
I haven't had a chance to try their product yet, so I don't want to fully endorse it, but something like their product that would give your trunk a layer of protection would be great. Or do what we did. We put a passion fruit vine on the back to make it almost mimic what their canopy would be. That protects it from getting any direct sunlight on the trunk. And coming from this way, this tree is been being protected by our lemon tree, which we are allowing to be a bush. Um, so none of these branches here get direct sun contact. Um, I'm gonna show you what it looks like when a tree does get direct sun contact. All right, here in Queen Creek is a great example on why citrus don't like to be trees and they like to be bushes. So you can see this trunk was not protected at all. It was sunburned, the bark fell off. This tree's not gonna make it, it's not gonna recover. It does have some life on it, um, but it's slim to none at the moment. I, this, this tree's probably toast, it's not gonna make it. So if you're not going to let your citrus tree be a bush and you're not going to protect it, even an older tree like this one, it's a good example, won't survive and it will eventually get to a point where your tree's gonna die. So that's why it's important that you protect that trunk from our harsh UV rays. All right, now I'm gonna show you what it, what a, what a orange tree or a citrus tree should look like if you're letting it just become a bush and how it can naturally protect itself. All right, I'm on a street out in Old Queen Creek called Grapefruit Drive. It's an old citrus, citrus district out here. And this is an example of how citrus trees like to grow and how they protect themselves from the sun. So if you can see, it's between a couple big oleanders. They don't really do that by themselves, but what they do is they create like a skirt that goes all the way down and even touches the ground. Um, if you look through the, the bushes, you can see it created a nice little canopy where it's protecting its trunk. Now if you do this, you won't need to protect your trunk at all. This is the recommended uh, way to let a citrus tree grow. Um, it does make it a bush, not a tree. So this is the recommendation we got from the Master Gardener program we had last year at the Greenfield Citrus Nursery. And uh, it is proven to protect the trunk with less labor and give you more fruit. So for higher fruit output and a better uh, a better health health conditions for your tree, just let them turn into a bush. So the commercial citrus growers, when they're growing these, they do allow them to go on to a bush form versus a lollipop tree form. And I work in Mesa at a place called GF, and I drive by these citrus groves, they're about a square mile of citrus groves, maybe even bigger next to my work, and I've driven by them for the last 14 years every day. Um, I remember seeing just these giant citrus trees and I'd plant a citrus tree and I could never figure out why those grew so fast even though I planted mine at the same time. It never made any sense to me until I did a little more research on it. One, you gotta make sure that you have the right rootstock. Like if you go to Home Depot and you just pick up a citrus tree, you're not paying attention to what rootstock it is. It might be a great rootstock for California or Texas or Florida, wherever they grow, but it wouldn't be a great rootstock for us. So you really gotta look at the rootstock varieties. Um, the sour orange is one that's been very successful. Most of the old orchards here in Mesa can have trees up to 100 years old that get sweeter and sweeter every year because they're on these great rootstocks. And then you can get a you can get a Bears Lime from Home Depot, which I don't have, but you can get one of those and it'll last for six or seven years because the rootstock's just not very strong. You might get some fruit off of it, it might be productive, but then it won't last. Um, I follow the Whitfield Garden Show every Sunday on uh, 92.3 FM and uh, Brian Whitfield, he's the uh, third or fourth generation of citrus grower here in Arizona constantly talks about rootstock, making sure you have the right rootstock. There's a lot of nurseries that will grow uh, for our climate. I recommend looking for those those nurseries when, when finding rootstocks. Arizona, Arizona sour orange or sour orange is not the only rootstock. It's good for our climate, but it's one of the good ones. So make sure you're not just randomly picking, hey, there's a cool little orange tree. I'm gonna buy that. The next thing is, is buying time. 
what I mean by buying time is you can go to Home Depot and you can buy one of those seven to thirteen dollar one gallon sleeve citrus trees and that thing is going to take a long time before you get fruit. So what I mean by buying time is instead of paying twelve dollars for that pay thirty five and get a three gallon tree and you'll have fruit within two years. You know it might take you seven years if you get it the other way. Um, if you do that and you get the right root stock you're going to be successful. Most, most people think that watch my channel that every single fruit that I plant I have this amazing soil mix I plant in the ground. With citrus, if you have the right root stock, you're going to benefit from just having as a small amount of organic matter and some of our native soil. They've been growing these and producing these for years this way and they don't put a lot of extra work into those. Uh, those, those plantings because they're they, they got the right rootstock to do it um, fertilizing citrus trees so I made a video recently on uh, how I fertilize and I'm gonna be making a new video because I've come to understand that I don't want to I don't want to fertilize the way I was doing it with synthetic fertilizers I want to go with a natural fertilization from here on out so citrus trees are a very high nitrogen tree so any, any natural fertilizer I'd recommend that, that has a higher level of nitrogen will help, help it grow, it helps it absorb uh, nutrients from the soil, and it'll just be a healthier tree all around. Um, watering. So watering like any tree it just depends on your tree. It depends on your situation. So ours are on a slight slope, so I, I can do a, a really heavy watering. Um, I usually do a heavy watering about once a week, but you you have to you have to test your soil you have to feel your ground if you have a brand new citrus tree planted in the middle of the dirt a dirt patch in your backyard with nothing around it giving it any protection then you're going to need to give it water more often you don't want it to dry up you're going to need to just watch your tree and watch the conditions that, that you're giving it and adapt to what your needs are um, so citrus could be uh, a challenging tree, but they're also a, a really, really strong tree to grow here in Arizona. And one of the things that I'm trying to learn how to do is to graft. And as I learn how to graft, I'll share that with the channel. Um, but like I said, I have this citrus tree that just doesn't have very good fruit. We don't really like the oranges. And we're gonna graft onto that tree and we're gonna try to get as many varieties as we possibly can because there are hundreds if not thousands of different varieties of citrus that we can get our hands on and, and try to get some variety and they could all be on one tree. It just depends on how much time and talent I have because this tangelo tree produces way more fruit than my family needs. So we end up sharing it. But it would be cool if this tree gave us, this one tree gave us fruit for six months and it gave us what our family needed to consume. So I hope you guys uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Uh, citrus trees are really a great tree for Arizona. I recommend it fully. And I hope you guys subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.